Um, okay. So starting off with our daily. Um, <clears throat> something to note, right, is based on Tuesday, which is the 5th, right, we were still medium term bullish. Why? Because of the immediate run into a previous high, right, not to mention the <clears throat> the intermediate uh, bullish momentum, bullish order flow. And once we start to zoom in, right, we know that internally we are bullish based on our low into our high, which are solidified after taking this low out, right? And so we knew that during the time of the zoom, which was around here, we were still short term bullish and we were anticipating potentially seeing back up here, right? But however, just as we can easily transition back into bullish momentum, we can transition back into bearish momentum. Um, so when I am noting, right, internally what is going on, right, we know, right, that although there is bearish momentum here, right, internally, right, we are still bullish from a medium term perspective. So, right, although our preliminary leg, right, is still bearish. Actually, let me use actual lines for that. Um, Right, although there is right a bearish mitigation which led into right a solidified high, which is a confirmed reaction. Right, the confirmed reaction then leads into right a uh, I'm sorry a order flow disruption. The order flow disruption now disrupts right the momentum to the downside. Right, so it's now harder to justify why we should continue lower because there is no strong order flow, especially with one, two, three bounce. Right, although I wouldn't consider this a bounce, I would consider that to be taken out. Right, so immediately after that, this mitigation is what propels us, right, to follow, right, the medium term momentum. So as soon as as that momentum occurs right now we can anticipate right that bullish momentum into the previous high into um the following previous high and <clears throat> right as you can see we are full-on bullish right especially um you know due to the fact that we aren't technically mitigating anything up here uh, but yeah as you can see we aren't mitigating anything um, so, right, even though we have, right, the internal structure break, you can see that there's a wick low that leads into the high that's then taken out, meaning internally there is, right, a scalp break of structure. The scalp break of structure is then coming back into, right, our final SC, which led to bearish momentum, bearish order flow. But keep in mind, this is only the beginning of a retracement because our direction has already been shown, right, to be bullish, right? So the pullback begins to, uh, begins to start, right? We see, right, internally, right, my high, right, down into my low, right, solidified low into my high to my low, right? And then here is where you see a break. So although there is bearish order flow there, you can see that the break leads to right a bearish um, i mean a bullish mitigation right and then the internal reaction this is where you can find that continuation right because the solidified low based on the structure break which would be here right solidifies the bias right solidifies the potential mitigation and is agreeing with the previous um with the previous short-term break of structure so although we do get a bullish reaction Right, like we said, there is a transition that can occur in the opposite direction as well. So because we have a confirmed reaction, right, based on here, there is a confirmed reaction, especially with taking structure points, we then inevitably fail. Because we fail, right, this is now a change of momentum. 
right the change of momentum is now giving us the bearish bias and that is where medium term i am now i'm gonna hold my bias to because if we zoom out all right let me take these off <clears throat> because we have now taken out a previous low right this break of structure solidifies this high as our short-term high right and because our short-term high right is now unwilling to break this right we are now seeing unwillingness based on our previous highs right meaning that directionally it now makes sense to be bearish um so right as we continue lower it's now going to be pretty important to see what happens once we start approaching our first level of liquidity and this is pretty much what we're going to um look forward to in the next week and this you know is pretty much going to tell us whether we're going to remain bullish or if we're going to start transitioning down into a bearish bias um especially because there is a previous low here previous low here so i want to see speed momentum reaction i want to see how we react uh when we react and what actually happens in order to judge you know my direction for the next you know week or two um with that being said we go into eu right and like we said um <clears throat> there was a potential momentum here and the only reason why i was pointing that out right was overall because right we had just taken out a major previous low and i didn't i don't really like to trade um continuations right after a major liquidity point has been taken out um so just let let this you know do its thing for the week not even the biggest move <clears throat> although we did fall i believe like 60 pips yeah like 70 pips right immediately after the call um but this is where we also study transitions <clears throat> this right low which led into the previous high right solidifies the range right so as soon as right this happens right we are technically short-term bullish right and we are short-term bullish until we see a bearish transition and the bearish transition occurs actually let me make this clear right here um so we're coming into internal bear structure right high low high low high low high low so because we have the break here and we even have let me actually use a square for that and we have bullish inefficiency Ooh, okay. there we go bullish inefficiency right reaction solidified low based on preliminary structure break this reaction gives us short-term bullish momentum because that fails right that is a sort of structural disruption and that now solidifies this range right why am i picking this low here because this is where our solidified low is right meaning we now have our structural range and this is the bearish continuation in a premium to the downside which dictates that bearish bias right but at the time of the call right i can only assume short-term bullishness because of the move here this and the reason why i say short term is because this is the solidification of the low which begins the pullback right and then it's until you see a bearish transition that you can take a justified short position there um as you can see there even was the inefficiency fill there depending on where you want to put your stop you can even put it up top for like three pips and that pretty much melted for uh, about 60 70 pips <coughs> all right so pretty good move um but like i said i just don't i just want to stick to my rule of not trading immediately after um a major liquidity point has been taken just because i don't want to you know experience a type of how do i say a, a unnecessary loss um however right this looks a bit different than dxy 
right? Because based on DXY, right, we already have, right, the confirmed reaction and the <clears throat> internal breaker structure. Whereas with EU, it still looks like we are very corrective. Because it looks we are still very corrective, right? Momentum is still to the downside. So, sorry about that. Um, so, because, right, we have to, we still see that bearish momentum. Right now is when we have to study internal reactions. And the first thing that I'm noting here, or the first thing that I can see here from a narrative perspective, right, is whether or not we mitigated an inefficiency. Right, or actually 30 minute SE. Right, so I'm acknowledging what's happening internally here. Right, and as you can see, right, internally, right, from a scout perspective, right, that's my final leg to the upside. The preliminary structure was taken, right? However, this is technically just a liquidity grab because we have not fully taken. We did not create a substantial new low, I'm sorry. So, right, because we took our preliminary structure, right, it's now important to know the preliminary structure of here, meaning the preliminary structure being this, right? So although this is a break, right, that technically makes you bullish, but now we're about to see a break here. Right, so if you see this break here, a substantial break, which we even potentially even take this out here. Um, and the reason why I say even break this out here is because of I'm acknowledging mitigation, potential mitigation there. So I wanna see a break of order flow. I wanna see a type of transition in order to even potentially think of bearish momentum, right? Because just as easily as we failed As we failed from a bullish perspective here, we can easily also fail from a bearish perspective here, right? Because as we mentioned, right, the lower in time frame we go, the, the lower the security is of a move. Um, and that's specifically stated in the course. Um, so it's important to see what happens based on the reaction in order to justify, you know, your narrative. Because although we are seeing a, a bearish reaction off of the 30 minute SE, Right, we are still seeing potential bullishness. We still don't have clear bearish order flow. So it's harder to justify a bearish position. Um, looking at AU. Hmm. Right, I believe um, <clears throat> this one also we anticipated a bit of, of short term bullish momentum in. Um, however, let me see the fifth and ten. so it was around here, right? So I believe we had acknowledged, um, that we would be coming back into a previous high and which is exactly what happened, right? However, we then see a move to the downside. So what does that move to the downside mean, right? From a perspective of structure, right? I'm now seeing. Okay, obviously, there's the initial mitigation here, the candle of mitigation. I'm sorry. There's one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, right? This is weak order flow, right? So even though we're seeing, right, a move into the downside, right, it's hard for this, right, to now take down here because of how much effort we're requiring in order to meet that previous low. So with that failing and that being taken out, we are now short term bullish. <clears throat> right and so internally right our immediate structural range is this right although this would have been the previous <clears throat> so right something to note is even though this is bullish right we also have to measure not only character 
but internal legs as well. And as you can see, right, we have our solidified low here. We have unwillingness, we have a break, and then we have a second break, right? Meaning that this, although we have a bullish structural range, I'm not necessarily bullish internally unless we get that bullish reaction. So if, as, as we zoom in more, right? Yes, <clears throat> we did have that bearish break, right? But then internally now we have to analyze, right? The bearish reaction and the bearish reaction has been taken out, right? Because this has been taken out, and this previous liquidity has been taken out. This is now pretty much justified as a bullish liquidity grab. So the bullish liquidity grab, right? I want to see what happens in a premium if we're going to react and go to continue higher, or if we're going to break and change the bias. <clears throat> right. So with that being said, last one, GU. Okay, so this one basically didn't do anything in terms of right there, in terms of what we were looking for, right? This POI becomes a bit unattractive, right? Because looking at, you know, our previous call, um, I wanted to see that internal bullish structure to meet the POI in order to then find a transition and then find a bearish momentum play, right? But because we had the confirmed reaction, right, our solidified high, then come into play, although we are still in bullish order flow, this reaction should have happened here. Meaning now, as we are back to approaching the POI, this is considered picking a high. Because this is considered picking a high, it's a lot harder to justify you know, a bearish position, meaning I would need much more of a confirmation, much more of a conservative entry. Um, but yeah, this one's probably been the sloppiest one of the three this week. And let's see, I believe it was stuck in between, yeah, in between not even 100 pips-ish. <clears throat> but with that being said, um, pretty slow week. I mean, I expected a slow week, especially because we, we had already taken out major, major, um, previous structural points, which are major liquidity points. So I anticipate, you know, a type of, of slower week afterwards, right? Even though EU actually did make some, some decent plays. Um, so do you guys have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Any um, any trades that you guys took this week? Anything? <clears throat> Let's see who's on call today. No questions right now, that's cool. I uh, got taken out on EU. I'm gonna send my chart to break even. Yeah, cool. Go ahead. Yep, so what I'm seeing here, um, where's my arrow? Actually, let me do a different color. So, bearish push, right? Bearish 
structural range coming back into a premium because we took out this right this here is now unwillingness because we took this out meaning that we are now transitioning into bullish that's what i see there <clears throat> Right, is that what you're seeing? Mm hmm Yep, it is, it is. Um, okay. So what exactly am I seeing? <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see. One minute entry, that's a fine entry. <clears throat> so um, what happened afterwards? I don't see anything wrong here, that's fine. Liquidity grab. Premium continuation makes sense off of a POI makes sense. Oh, you have to show me, bro. Like have these charts ready and show me um, so that then we can analyze the reactions. <clears throat> You're referencing here. I mean, if you watched Tuesday's call, bro, I did cover that exact move, I believe. I'm positive I covered that exact move. Did you, like, just be honest with me, did you watch Tuesday's call? Like, yeah, I remember exactly covering this. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, bro, just tell me, did you watch Tuesday's call or did you not? Because if you didn't, I covered this exact move. Yeah, you see, you, you, you have to watch these zooms, bro. Um, like, do you only watch them when they're live? Like, you need to be, you need to be watching these. Right, I covered this simple intraday push, right? There's a bearish break of structure. You pick the high which is fine because your entry was taken properly right so because we have a immediate break of structure this is not a break of structure this is a solidification of the high meaning you are still bullish right so this push makes sense from an intraday perspective right this push here But yeah, I'm not going to go back into detail with that. You can go watch Tuesday Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the re-entry makes sense because of the internal break. The internal break solidifies the high, meaning that's unwillingness. That's the only reason why this is conservative and this is aggressive. Right, you're although you're conservative with your entry in terms of how you enter, you're aggressive because you're picking the high of an intraday push. But in terms of conservative entry, 
right and conservative overall um, approach is here because of the unwillingness based on the preliminary structure break solidifying the high and that gives you you know much more reasoning for this and it's still not even 10 a.m there so yeah so just because you hit a break even right that does not necessarily mean give up on your trade which I kind of like that. <clears throat> I've noticed almost ev like almost everybody who sends me journals is that if you fail the first time, you pretty much give up, which is is a is is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. It's a good thing because you're not trying to take twenty trades and until you get a winner, but then you end up breaking even because you took twenty losses. Um, it's good in that aspect, but it's bad in the aspect that you now fear re-entering because you now think your bias is invalidated because your entry was broken even which is false because to assume that is to also assume that you caught the perfect entry right and obviously if you're breaking even then it's not the perfect entry um so if you break even you then just look for a second opportunity or you then take a step back and you analyze why it went wrong and then try to capitalize based on that going wrong because usually if you catch a transition right as in you know the the aggressive transition here right and it fails Right, that's technically how you can catch a sort of disruption, whether it be order flow or structural. Um, and that's pretty much how those concepts were made up because sometimes my entries would, obviously I'd, I'd get a good entry, but the break even would happen or the reversal would happen, right? And then that's when you see, you know, the opposite bias come into play, right? And that's the entire basis of a reaccumulation of a redistribution, right? So, that's kind of how the disruption concepts were came into place is when break evens were failed or or were met and causing the idea to fail and then you know giving that second bias in terms of the other bias in terms of a buyer to a sell or a sell to a buy um if that makes sense i hope that makes sense anyone anyway, wait cool um did you just send this one Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So this is important because it's this, right? That then generated this, right? Meaning there's money there. Yeah, see, so, so you're doing everything right. You're finding your bias correctly. You're understanding narrative correctly. You're entering correctly. But now it's the management issue. <clears throat> management issue and a bit of an incorrect bias in terms of you get the scout bias correct, but not the minor intraday bias correct. So that's definitely a um, simple mistake. Simple mistake. Let me see. <clears throat> uh-huh. Okay, so this also makes sense, but keep in mind, you're still being extremely aggressive. Low, high, right? But I like how this actually has a confirmed reaction, right? As you can see there, confirmed reaction, solidified low, then there is a break, right? So I like this, I like this, that's nice. Right, this is only valid in terms of a bearish, re a bullish push, if it's a solidified low being taken out. And by solidified low, I, you know, I mean the, um, the preliminary being taken out. However, you do have to realize that you're still bullish. So even if you take your entry here, right, there's nothing wrong with hedging there. And your invalidation being obviously the wick low. Right, there's nothing wrong with hedging there because you're also trying to cover 
the previous structural range and you don't want that to reverse on you. But yeah, this is correct. Yeah, it's just um it's just a it's a diligence thing. Like you you notice this over time because it's it's the little details that will make the biggest differences. Right? Because anybody <clears throat> because um like this is something I don't really like to tell people that are outside of the group, but everybody will like a lot of people in my in DMs will be like um, oh, we trade similar concepts. Oh, we trade the same thing. And, we're like, and I'm like, no, you don't. You may think you do, but at the end of the day, it's these little details, right, that make the biggest differences, right? And I know solidified highs and lows is taught nowhere because that's my concept. Right, so you have to remember that these little concepts, these little details, these little, little um, refinements are es essentially what's going to be the difference maker Right, in terms of either winning a trade, losing a trade, getting a break even, missing a trade, you know, things like that. So just remember, it's the little details that matter. Right, so does that make sense? <clears throat> Cool, cool, but yeah, um, definitely. I mean, you got everything right. I mean, the, like, there's no complaints outside of acknowledging, right? The the or being dynamic, basically, is be observing the the second bias, the opposite bias, and uh, either hedging or just being, uh, or just uh, recognizing it is what I mean. <coughs> Yep, 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 not bad. Um, but yeah, does anybody else have any questions? Excuse me. Cool, any more questions? <clears throat> cool so can we end it off here are you guys good awesome all right um i'm probably gonna stick to um pre-recorded tuesdays live fridays probably gonna stick to that it's a lot easier um for me and then also you guys can save your questions for friday and we can actually have a discussion instead of just not having questions. Yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys um, on Tuesday. <clears throat>